There are as many ways of formatting our code as there are developers who write it. When we're working on a team, there needs to be a common way to format the code to maximize the team cohesion. By having a coding standard, we can define exactly how we expect the code to be formatted and make it easier for everyone to read. In this video, we'll discuss why we need a coding standard, what should be included in a coding standard, and why we should start by looking at the PSR family of standards. Hello developers and welcome to PHP Developers TV, your home for everything you need to know to be a knowledgeable PHP developer. As always, I'm your host, Scott Keck Warren. What are coding standards? Coding standards are a set of coding rules, conventions, and best practices that we should adhere to as we're writing our source code. They should help us write cleaner, more understandable code. Why have a coding standard? As developers, we'll use these coding standards to inform how we write our code. Instead of each developer contributing code to their own set of preferences, they will use an agreed-upon set of coding standards. The biggest gain here is that this makes sure that the code is in a consistent style and that parts of the code written by different developers doesn't look different. Not only does it make the code easier for every developer to understand, but as each developer looks at the code, they'll know what to expect. Things that should be included in a coding standard include, but are not limited to, where brackets are placed, if tabs or spaces are used in indentation, how variables should be formatted, camel case versus snake case versus Pascal case, for example, spacing in various uh, control structures, and as well as how to name classes and functions. Some of these items can be validated using automated tools, and some of them need to be done manually through code reviews. In our next video in this series, we'll discuss how to use an automated tool to check our code against the standard. How to name things. Naming things is a challenge. As developers, we need to make sure that we're doing our best to name things in a way that others will be able to understand our intent. We always want to make sure that we're using names that someone can understand what is going on a week from now and a year from now. Sometimes it's someone else reading our code, but a lot of the times it might just be ourselves. We want to make sure that we give ourselves the best possible setup to make any changes and debug any problems in the future. As a team, it's always a good idea to have a discussion and decide on standards for how to name functions, classes, and variables. This will increase the chances that everyone's code will be consistent. How to pick a standard. Just as there are a wide variety of developer preferences in coding, there are also a wide variety of options for coding. When picking a coding standard, we have three basic options. The first is that we can create a coding standard from scratch. The second is that we can borrow a coding standard that already exists and use it as is. Finally, we can borrow a coding standard that exists and then add or remove rules that don't fit with our team's environment. Over the years, we've used all three approaches and we found the best approach is to start with an existing coding standard and then modify it for our team. This allows us to not get stuck into making a bunch of small decisions like bracket placement and spacing and instead focus on the items that can really help our team be as efficient as possible. There are lots of different coding standards that we can pick from, including the PAIR standard, the PSR1, PSR2, PSR12, Squeeze, and Zen standard. Let's talk about the one we prefer to use the most, the PSR family of standards. The PSR family of standards was created by the PHP Framework Interop Group, or PHP FIG. The benefit of using this family of standards is that if our application is using a framework, that framework will most likely be using the same standard. It can be problematic if the framework we're using doesn't match the standard we've picked. The PSR family of standards comprises of three different documents that define how our code should be developed. PSR1, Basic Coding Standard. The PSR1 coding standard was the original coding standard set forth by the PHP FIG. It has basic rules like how files should be formatted. This is no longer a standard that we should use directly. Instead, we should use the PSR2 or 12 standards because they use PS1 as a starting point and then add more to it. For a full listing of the rules, see the link in the description. PSR2, Coding Style Guide. The PSR2 standard was the first attempt at reducing the cognitive friction that we experience when scanning code from different authors. 
it does so by listing out a wide variety of rules and expectations for how to format our code. Examples of this include using four spaces for indenting and how a line should be 80 characters or less, but never more than 120. As we said before, this extends the PSR 1 standard. The PSR 2 standard has been replaced by the PSR 12 standard, so for an application supporting the currently supported versions of the PHP language, it's best to use the PSR 12 standard. For a full list of the rules, see the link in the description. PSR 12 Extended Coding Style The PSR 12 standard was the second attempt at reducing the cognitive friction when scanning code from different authors. This is the second attempt because the PSR 2 standard was accepted in 2012 and needed to be updated for the changes in the PHP core language. The PSR 12 standard also extends the PSR 1 standard. Our preference is to use the PSR 12 standard as it does have these additional items. For a full listing of the rules, we've included a link in the description. Legacy code. When we're adding a coding standard to an existing project, there are essentially two ways that we can do this. The first is that we can run a pass over the code to rewrite everything all at once. This is an excellent way to get everything up to date quickly, but this can be a challenge to implement when Multiple people are working in the code base, and there are multiple open pull requests and branches that need to be maintained. Trust us when we say that the conflicts of this crate can be overwhelming. The second way is to apply the new standard to new files, and then clean up all of the files as they are worked on. Our decision here will depend on several factors, including how many open PRs the project has, and how much churn there is in the code base. Our preference is to only apply the new standard to new files, and then clean up the code slowly. We've even made it a daily task for a developer to clean up 1% of the files a day. This reduces the chances of having conflicts, but still moves us forward. What you need to know. Coding standards are a set of coding rules, conventions, and best practices. They help make code easier to read and thus easier to maintain. The PHP FIG has a series of standards that are a great starting point for any team. As always, thank you for watching our video. Please make sure you subscribe, comment, and like, as it does help others find us. If you want to help support the channel, support us on Patreon. We would really love it, and we'll include your name in the list of supporters in each video. A link can be found in the description. Has your team started using a coding standard because of this video? Let us know in the comments. This is Scott Keck Warren for PHP Developers TV signing off and reminding you to keep coding.